You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, the hazing incident. The hazing incident is regularly referred to by the detractors of Harry's wife as demonstrating an appalling act on her part. Apparently, age 20, Harry's wife took part in an unspeakable hazing incident. She used superglue, not eyelash glue, to glue shut the eyelids of two first-year sorority pledges. The outcome of this hazing incident, apparently, was that the two young women were almost permanently blinded and so traumatised that they could not bear to even be in the same room as Harry's wife. Northwestern University apparently held a full inquiry into the incident. Harry's wife's father used his lottery money to buy her legal representation that was able to get her record sealed, which is why Northwestern is completely silent on the subject of her, and they placed a gag order on other people to ensure that word did not get around as to exactly why the Northwestern chapter was placed under probation. Accordingly, the suggestion was that the local chapter of her sorority, Kappa Kappa Gamma, voted against holding any celebration to mark the May 19th ceremony of her wedding as a consequence of her behaviour beforehand. And that she had been engaged in this very unpleasant act. It's often brought up as being the basis for why many people don't like her. This therefore provokes our first question. Is this something that a narcissist would do? Well, it won't surprise you to hear that the answer is yes. A narcissist would engage in such a behaviour because there's no emotional empathy for the victim. It's a means of asserting control over that victim by devaluing them. There's a lack of accountability for behaviour by engaging in something which potentially could affect somebody's sight. It's a form of manipulation, albeit a rudimentary one. It shows haughty behaviours to treat someone with such contempt. And therefore, as a matter of proposition, would a narcissist glue somebody else's eyes shut? The answer would be yes. However, what we need to take into account is that Harry's wife is a middle-mid-range narcissist, either A or B. This means that she's largely passive-aggressive. There will be instances behind closed doors where ignited fury, usually cold but sometimes hot, makes an appearance. But this usually would be directed against the hapless intimate partner primary source. So it would be somebody like Trevor Engelson, Corey the chef, and old ginger bollocks himself, who would be on the receiving end of being shouted at, possibly being physically attacked, scratched, shoved, spat at, that they would be insulted and called names as there would be an explosion of heated fury. It would be less likely to be exhibited towards secondary and tertiary sources. We know that Harry's wife faced bullying allegations, but it would appear that the evidence there was more about the way that she would speak to people, the demands that she made on them. For instance, where she commented to a member of staff, if there was anybody else I would ask to do this, I would, but I'm going to basically have to ask you and you're useless. She would belittle people rather than shout and yell at them. Why? Because as a middle mid-range narcissist, she invariably acts through passive aggressive, passive aggressive behaviours, but also because of the presence of the facade. Mid-range narcissists are the biggest users of the facade, and the facade being one for middle mid-rangers of being kind and decent people. Therefore, if you spend a lot of your time going around shouting at everybody, the facade isn't going to work. There were two purported victims but one suspects that there would have been other onlookers who will have seen this taking place should the hazing incident have occurred. And therefore, to behave in such activity would affect her facade. Now, it might be argued, of course, that because it was part of the sorority actions and a hazing incident, that it would receive the approval of other individuals. But even then, a narcissist such as Harry's wife would not want herself to be seen as an unpleasant person 
but rather she would want to be seen as kind and caring. And in such circumstances, a narcissist might even be reluctant to engage in such behaviours because of the subconscious threat that exists to the facade. Harry's wife would be more likely to use different forms of manipulations in these circumstances to avoid the risk to the facade. One can't rule it out completely that she wouldn't have done it, but what I would say is that the nature of her narcissism means that at first blush she'd be likely to behave this way, but when we examine the actual sub-school, rather than it being a probability, I see it more as a possibility that she would behave. Thus, having examined it from the perspective of her narcissism, it's far from likely that this actually occurred. Then we look at the fact that there's been no reporting of the incident. Nothing has been written about it in the press. Nobody, nobody has come forward to speak about the incident. You would have expected that there would have been fellow students, staff members, maybe the victims themselves that would speak out about it, roommates who had witnessed what had gone on or at least what had occurred, that if this happened it would be campus gossip, and that someone somewhere would have come forward to claim their 15 minutes of fame and drop the Duchess in it. The counter-argument to that is to suggest, of course, that people have been silenced, and that Thomas Markle Sr. used his lottery win as hush money. It was wildly, report, widely reported in the press that he won $750,000 in 1990, and that the money was used for an ill-fated jewellery business, and then for his three children to get a bit of a head start, head start in life. Although, interestingly, having said to have won this in 1990, he then filed for bankruptcy in July 1991 with personal property of $3,931. He's certainly gone some distance if he spent all of that money, but perhaps it was spent on hushing things up. However, Thomas Markle Jr. suggests that his father never actually won the lottery and it was a story that was made up for the purposes of earning money. And Tom Bauer, at page 23 of Revenge, states, The end of 1990 was a good time for the Markles. Through hard work, Thomas was flush with money. 26 years later, to extract a payment from an eager journalist, Tom Jr. invented the story that his father had won $750,000 in the California State Lottery. There was no lottery win, but Thomas did give Tom Jr. money to start a flower shop and bought Samantha a car. Harry's wife's school fees were easily affordable for him. Accordingly, it doesn't appear to be the case that there was a lottery win that could be used for hush money. Furthermore, even if he had won three quarters of a million, it's highly questionable that that would be sufficient to silence all the various people that would be privy to the alleged incident in the first place. He would need millions rather than three quarters of a million. There's also the suggestion that Harry's wife was expelled. But nothing was said about that and she was graduated. It does seem odd that nobody involved, none of the alleged victims, none of the students, none of the staff, none of the roommates, not even the janitor, spoke out about what has gone on. This suggests, therefore, that it either never happened or everybody has been shut up. As I've just explained, I don't see it as likely at all that Thomas Markle secured the gagging of them. But what about the school? Might it have looked to have silenced the people involved? After all, would this not present a huge reputational risk and cost to them? Ultimately, it would actually be far easier to expel the culprit and then reach a settlement with the victims rather than spend large amounts of money trying to find lots of people who could have spoken to other people to quash knowledge of what had gone on. In terms of reputational management, it would be far more effective to recognise that a rogue student has behaved this way, that the organisation does not endorse such behaviour, that the other people that were involved have been reprimanded, the main culprit has been excluded or expelled, and that the victims have been assisted and given therapy and support, etc., etc., etc. That would be a far more effective and easier outcome for the relevant education institution to achieve. 
Accordingly, with regard to the hazing incident, whilst there are many who like the idea of Harry's wife behaving this way, the evidence, and also her form of narcissism, does not support that it has occurred. And rather, it's possible, but I see it as unlikely that this ever happened. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.